Oh, okay. I think we are resuming and we should have visual this time around. I don't know, OBS sometimes just freaks out. A quick restart of OBS fixed it. What can you do? So anyways, I stopped Plex server and what we want to do now is we actually want to create a mount point, I guess. So I'm going to try to add a mount point and see what happens. Um, let's see, main pool. Here it is. I'm going to create this mount point. And that de destination is going to go into Plex Media Server. No, wait a minute. Media, I guess. Save. Not really sure what that did right there. Not gonna lie. So this main pool is corresponding to that media folder that I just picked. I think that's what I needed to do. So I think we're done there. Let's go back to the jails. And I'm going to start this. So this is kind of still rather new to me, which is why I'm kind of <laughs> questioning what I'm doing. But it seems simple enough where I feel like I got it. And once we get this started, we should be able to get our IP address back. I know we have to go back to plugins, right? And it shows our plugin. Let's grab this. Throw it in here. I'm going to select myself, enter my pin, enter pin, enter pin where? Oh, here. Oh, crap. Is it going to show? I'm going to switch over real quick. Oh, it doesn't show. Better safe than sorry, though. Okay, so here we go. Um, let's go back to our settings here. So let's go to library. No. Um, manage libraries. Add a library. Movies. Next. Browse. Oops, go back. Media, there we go, movies. So now it's linked to that folder that I told it to link to. And then we're gonna do, oh, I think that's, that's done right there. So that's movies. Then we're gonna add a library for TV shows. Same process. We're going to go here, media, TV shows, add, add library. Done. Is there anything else I need to do here? No, I think I'm going to keep the defaults. Rating source, Rotten Tomatoes. Okay. I think that's done. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to upload, um, let's do like a season of something. I think, th which drive is it that has all my data? Pretty sure it's this one that I'm holding. Oh. So let's plug it into USB 3.0 here. Now this is all over the network, so I'm really curious what the speeds are going to be. And uh, let me go ahead. Okay, we are in the actually. Let's, yeah, let's do TV shows, 
And we'll do, let's see how long a, f a season of Friends takes. So media, movies and TV, shows, excuse me. Let's do the first season of Friends. So it's going from USB to through the network to the server. Okay, we're getting speeds of about 100 megabytes per second. Now, that's not bad actually. That's not bad at all. Uh, can I show you this without exposing too much? Add a window, create a new window capture. Huh, that works. Why can't you see the middle part though? There you go. From friends to friends. You can't see the actual speed. I wonder why it's not showing that. Very strange. Very strange. Uh, let's go ahead and delete this. Yes, I totally named my files like that, if you're wondering. That is 100% of my files. And you can't say otherwise. And if you try, well, I might just let you. I wonder how long all of this will take. I want to see the estimate if I do the rest of the season. So there's nine other seasons. This one didn't take too long. Um, it's much better than what it used to be. And there is a 2.5 gig um, uh, network card in there. So I think I can try getting faster speeds from that. But then again, USB to uh, over the network is not going to be as fast as a direct connection through USB. So not much I can do about that. So we're going to transfer 102 gigabytes right now. It's going down. It's going to take about 18 minutes. That's much better. I spent, I think the last time I did this with the old machine and I was going through the network and it was not a wired network for either machines. Both were on Wi-Fi. That was at a snail's pace. That took about, I wanted to, I want to say like seven, eight hours to do a hundred gigs. And now we've sliced that to 20 minutes. Jesus, we were getting four megabytes a second, something like that. It was absolutely terrible. No, it can't be four megabytes a second. What was it? I have it on video. It's, it's in the other video part, I think. I don't remember. I'm stumped. But hey, it's working. Uh, you don't see it actually happening, but this folder right here is getting filled up. Can I actually click that and see? It says library is currently empty. What if I retry? Huh. That's a bit worrisome. I'm scanning for library files. Oh, there we go. Sweet. That was scary. I think it's because the server is doing a bunch of stuff right now. And theoretically, I should be able to play the first season without any interference while uploading stuff. Um, that's just the nature of the drives. So let me open the Plex app here. If I could find it. Here it is. Let me see if I could access that first um, season while this is going on. And we'll see if the speed drops. That'll be interesting. Since you guys can't see it, see it anyway, we're still hovering about 100 megabytes per second. Specifically, like 93 to 98 is like the average. Uh, we're dropping down 85, but we're bouncing back up to 97, over 100 sometimes. Anyways, uh, let me see if I can access my server oh there we go uh, why don't I see season one
Whoa. Whoa. Calm down. We're about to get that copyright strike. Okay, so I do see it. Season one. Uh, let's try this one. Activate Plex, not now. Oh, it's loading. I'm streaming it. This is coming straight from the Plex server. And the speed is not being affected. That's amazing. That's amazing. I will show that I am playing it. Just a little flash, if in case you don't believe me, but I don't want to get a copyright strike. It's playing. It's it's going. Um nice. They could take friends from Netflix, but they can't take friends from me. <laughs> I'm, I'm skipping through it, and... Okay, that one took a little while, but I was skipping a lot. Little skips that are preloaded don't take that long whatsoever. Awesome! We got that working. Plex is alive. Awesome, 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 awesome. This is one my girl's favorite show, and she'll be very pleased to know that we are now able to watch it again from the comfort of our couch. Okay, that's that's a good step. So that one still has 14 minutes to go. I'm very pleased with that uh, outcome there. Um, plus, it's, I mean, how often am I going to upload 10 seasons of a show? We don't watch that many shows. So, yeah. And these are pretty high quality uh, videos. Straight from the Blu-ray disc that we totally own. Yes. Um... Yeah, I think that is it. Oh, we gotta set up the cache drive. Oh man, do I wanna wait 14 minutes? Cause could I set up the cache while this is going? Let's at least read up on it before we start on it. Um, so that's done. So I guess we should reiterate how we got the actual Plex working. Um, let me go back here. So we installed the Plex plugin and then we went in to the um, Plex, where, did, where is it? Well, yeah, we went down to the drop down. We stopped it, set up a mount point. The mount point pointed to the folders we created in the Windows Network Sharing Explorer window. So we, I manually went in, made a movies folder, a TV shows folder like you would in any other Windows directory, and um, then we went back in, set up the mount points to give us access to those folders in the pool that we made. So that was just the prep step. Then we booted up the Plex server, or the Plex plugin again, went into the library settings, and then we pointed Plex to use the folders that we just created. So we, we had to tell the plugin where the folders are, and we had to mount them to the plugin, and then we had to let Plex know, hey, these are the folders we want to use. So that's the preliminary steps. Now that we got Plex up and running, this is officially a Plex server. We're going to go ahead, go back into FreeNAS, and we're going to set up a cache drive. Now what a cache drive will do is it will theoretically uh, lighten up the load on the actual hard drives. So things that we access either often or... I don't know exactly how it works as a cache, but it should speed up the process when we're asking the server to do something. So after we do something regularly a few times, it'll be like, hey, they like watching Friends a lot, specifically season five. I'm gonna put five season five in the cache. I don't know how it works, but it should be similar to that. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna go back here. Uh, let me, ooh, let's not do that. Let's do... Where is it? Here. There we go. Um, so let's look for storage pools. There should be a cache here. Adding cache or log devices. There it is. Pools can be used either during or after pool creation to an to add an SSD as a cache or log device to improve performance of the pool under specific use cases. Dogs are going crazy. My apologies if you can hear that. 
Before adding a cache or log device, refer to the ZFS primer to determine if the system will benefit or suffer from the addition of the device. Suffer? Um, I guess the easiest method would be just to type cache. There it is. What is going on? Everyone needs to calm down. Okay, when an application performs large amounts of random reads on a data set small enough to fit into an LR or L2 arc, read performance can be increased by adding a dedicated cache device. SSD cache devices only help if the active data is larger than the system RAM, but small enough that a significant percentage fits on the SSD. As a general rule, L2 ARC should not be added to a system with less than 32 gigabytes of RAM, and the size of L2 ARC should not exceed 10 times the amount of RAM. 10 times the amount of RAM? How much RAM does this machine have? These are the questions we ask ourselves. I don't even know how much RAM this thing has. I'm looking, I'm looking. Core 2 Quad Q9650, that's a good processor. I don't see any RAM here. Where's the RAM at? Let's pull here memory. 8 gigs of RAM? I don't like that. Don't like that whatsoever. Okay, 8 gigs of RAM. There's 4 2 gig sticks in there. <laughs> that seems inefficient. Um, can you tell me what kind of memory it is? If it's DDR2, I think I have replacements, at least um, better RAM, if not bigger RAM. Hmm. Okay. It doesn't tell me much at all, but it's fine. That's fine. All right. Um... Well, it's definitely not exceeding 10 times. Actually, yeah, that's true. It's not exceeding 10 times. Um, next up. So that's pretty much all we need to know about that. Um, okay, so we read that. I, th I don't think we're going to suffer from having a cache drive at this point in time. Oh, I have notifications though. What's going wrong? Certificate FreeNAS default has expired. Oh, it's because this, I think it's all uh, having to do with my clock. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to dismiss those right now. Okay. To add a cache or a log device during pool creation, click Add Cache or Add Log button. Select the disk from available disks and use the right arrow next to the cache VDEV. What? During pool creation? I didn't. The problem is it's not showing up. Like if I go to disks. Here. It's DA5. This says boot pool. Wait a minute. Oh no. Did I install it on the wrong drive? No. Don't tell me I installed FreeNAS on the wrong drive. That's impossible. Oh my god. I installed FreeNAS on the wrong drive. No wonder it wasn't showing up.
that is Okay, I'm thinking of how to do this. We're gonna have to back up everything on the boot drive install free NAS. Hold on, let me, let me think about this. Hold on. Damn it! How did I screw that up? I have the, the installation video. I'm gonna have to go back and review. Did I actually noob it up? And I mean, obviously, I installed it on the wrong one. This is the one I wanted to install on. Uh, okay. All right. I think this is gonna be fine. So this has five minutes left, and then. I'm gonna see. God. It's true. I'm going to do this. System, general, oh god, this looks very different than the UI they're using. System, general, save config. Okay. I'm going to create two backups because there's two different ways you can back this up. Freenas backup. Okay. And then let's do another save without any of that stuff. All right, so all you really need to do is get the config, and then if we want to restore, we use upload config instead of download. Okay, easy enough. All right, um, this might be a good place to 
uh, freak out, maybe. Okay, where's that USB stick I was showing earlier? This has another minute, and then I'm gonna reinstall FreeNAS on the actual drive that I wanted to. So I'm actually gonna shut down, unplug the SSD. Oh man, I have it sucks because I have to format that SSD. How am I gonna format that now? format the SSD. I'll have to I could screw everything up that I worked for but I mean honestly at this point I know what to do to set this up exactly the way I did right now. I would just install it on the right drive. Crap. Crap crap crap. Oh, it's done. It is done. Um, hopefully, I don't have to do that again. So, FreeNAS has those files. I have the backup of the config files. I'm going to go in here, safely remove my drive, and then device currently in use, close any program that's using it. Uh, I mean, no one's using it. Eject. Okay. Safely removed. Always eject your drives. Less of a chance of corrupting anything. Yes, there is a very small chance of destruction, but would you rather have a small chance or no chance? Okay, so let's get Rufus open. Let's select a disk image. Freenas 11.3. Uh, that looks good, looks good. Let's do this. This is extremely annoying. I want that cache drive. It's in there. I'm going to use it. I still can't believe I screwed that up. So we're writing the image onto the flash drive, and that's going to be our free NAS download and installation. All right, let's put that away for now. It is getting increasingly hot in here. wondering what to do with that hard drive that's just dangling there. If I double sided tape it that could be dangerous. My other option, find a way to mount it normally. I could potentially mount it under the SSD or on top of the SSD. problem is if something goes wrong oh what happened Rufus okay we don't need to update Rufus right now okay um, done I think we're done I'm gonna call that done so now what we're gonna do it's gonna kill me to do this I'm gonna reinstall FreeNAS
Yeah, I'm gonna have to reinstall FreeNAS. Okay. I got the config file, so that that's that's important. So let me go ahead, shut this baby down. Oh no. Confirming shutdown. <clears throat> okay. Well, OBS decided to crash. OBS decided to crash on me. No idea why. Oh my goodness. That's pointing in the wrong direction. Everything is failing at the same time. All right, so um, uh, this is like the third stream at this point. So uh, what we did, let me just make sure that we're good. OK, we're, we're good. Um, I installed um, the, inst the, I made an installation drive with the uh, existing thumb drive I had, plugged it in, we're gonna reinstall, or actually at this point I should unplug the SSD, leave the HDD in that I wanna install FreeNAS on, and then we're gonna see if we can get that up and running. Um, if we can, good, if not, well, uh, I'm gonna be a little scared, to be honest. This is it. This is the drive. It looks very dated. Oh, man, I'd love to know what era this is from. What I want to see is I have this dual layer uh, drive mounting mechanism. I'm wondering if I can somehow put that in here. So that way I can have the boot drive not hanging by a thread. Um, I need to get a screwdriver. B R B. It is hot in here compared to out there. So this thing was literally on two uh, screws. All right. So I should be able to bend these down, right? I mean, that's the whole idea. Uh, this adapter thing isn't gonna fit though. That's a shame. Man, that is a shame. This adapter will not fit regardless. So let me see if I have another way to do this. I 
interesting. What am I supposed to do with this? I mean, I don't want to screw it. I might double-sided tape it, to be honest. But th that would be kind of ghetto, though. You know what? I think I'm going to do it anyway. Because I need to get two drives on here. Um, yeah, I need to get two drives on here. I can't have that thing dangling. So I think I'm going to double-sided tape this to, to this. And then I'll get that second drive and double-sided tape that too. Yeah. That is my plan. Double-sided tape, which I have right here. So that's what we're going to do. Let me just clean that off with my hand. Okay. Do not laugh at my double-sided tape use. This stuff is strong. It's not just any double-sided tape. I think this is Gorilla Tape. No, this is Scotch. It doesn't even matter. Scotch is good too. So we're going to just put one like that and then we'll put another one under it. I mean, it doesn't have to be permanent because drives do die, Con considering this one has some age to it, and it was used as a cast drive before. I don't expect too much longevity. Okay. Ta-da! So there it is. We're going to use this much double-sided adhesive. And then that's just, that's the idea. Just like that. Bam. I know. I know. This is a stupid idea. How dare I self call my how dare I call myself a tech spot? But let me tell you, Linus Tech Tips, as fancy and big as he is, he still does these little ghetto things. He still whips out the duct tape. He still whips out the glue. Yeah, he's got, you know fancy machinery that he can use but nah we go back to the duct tape you know what they say if you can't duck it fazuck it okay I'm having some trouble taking off the double sided plastic protector thing come on done. All right, now we're just going to make sure the power connectors are on the right side. Push the drive down and look at that. That's beautiful. I'm going to do that to the next drive as well. This one I got to be a little more careful of because it has a circuit board on the bottom. So, what can I do? Um I used to have an anti static bag somewhere. Let me see if I can find that. We've got a box of goodies here. Lots of box of goodies. And anti static bag. Sorry, headphone users. Okay. So I think I'm going to put this bag like between the two drives. Not like the whole bag, I'm not going to wrap it in a bag, but I'm going to cut it out and have a layer between. That should be fine. Okay. I know, bags and microphones do not go together. What am I doing? I'm trying to be safe. That's what I'm doing. Boy, that was not a straight cut at all. But that might be all we need. All right. 
it, and there's a piece of tape here that I don't know why it's bothering me. I feel like regular scotch tape is not anti-static. Okay, so I'm just going to protect the circuit board like that. Yeah. It's like a little protection between the two drives. They don't know each other. They don't know where they've been. Oh god, I'm scared. This doesn't seem like a very good idea. Um, I still need to mount it on there somehow. Double-sided tape is not going to do it. Hmm. Yeah, I don't want to double-sided tape the actual circuit board. That seems like a terrible idea. The adhesive might be conductive, and I cannot confirm nor deny that. Uh, let me think. That's a good way to mount it. Um... I'm actually considering duct tape. It's stupid, but it'll work. I'll get some colorful duct tape too. These scissors are all adhesive-y and they do not cut well anymore. I gotta get that fixed. Let's see if this will work. It's already not working. Um, kind of work I guess I don't know I mean it's better than nothing holding it now if this doesn't work I'm gonna have to think of a new plan um, plan number one we can just say screw it and live with uh, having the bootable drive be the SSD and then getting another SSD, a small volume SSD, and then making that the cache drive. And then I can get rid of this uh, hard drive that I'm actually duct taping. This is hilarious. I can't believe I'm actually getting something accomplished with duct tape. It looks like it, it'll work. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry, but that that is working. Look at that. A dual layer drive setup with duct tape. It's holding. It's holding very well with literally tape. It's uh, double sided tape on the bottom and uh, duct tape on the sides. And it's, it's. I mean, it's not like this thing is going to be moving that much. So that's fine. That's fine. Let me smack this baby back in there. Uh, this and this. Are for that drive. Let me open this up like that. Uh, you know what? Maybe I should unplug the power supply. Yeah. Need all the space we can get. So let's take this. Alright, 
let's uh give me a second here. Jesus Christ, it's a tight fit. There we go. Got that in there. Now let me do the other drive. Okay. This reminds me why I should not get a mini ATX case. Okay. And then let's have the SATA connector. Okay. It's not going in. I have no idea why. Is it? Oh my god, is it this one? This one's side of connector? Really? Oh man. My idea failed. My feel my idea failed dramatically. Okay. Uh wow, that was a terrible idea. Considering it didn't work. Okay. So it didn't work. It's just not enough space um, to put all the cables back in. That's the, that's the issue I'm having. Okay. Good attempt, no cigar. Okay, let me put this back and then do my original idea of just uh, placing it where it was before except just taking it on there um, you know what before I do that let's do the installation itself this drive Okay. Um, F9. Wow, I am sweating. While this boots up, I'm going to go get the AC.
Whew, it's gonna be a bit loud with the AC on, but it's much needed. All right, so let's see if we can boot into the installation. Oh, I don't, I don't care if it's loud on the mic. I am gonna apologize, but I'm dying in here. Whew. going on boot so I disconnected the SSD which had the original boot uh, installation on it so theoretically that shouldn't play a role anymore F9 come on give me the boot menu we should see the SanDisk USB stick at some point in time Realize that's not on. That probably improves the lighting significantly. At least I hope it does. I don't know. It's coming from a weird angle. The lighting in here is garbage. What are you beeping at? can't tell what's going on. Ah, there we go. You see that? Probably not well. USB device. This probably works a little better, but I'm all shaky. Because I'm a human. Not a tripod. Oh, free NAS. Installation. Stay like that. Okay. We're going to just go into the installer. I know exactly where the installer is supposed to go. We have the backup. It's all good. It's doing its hacker looking thing. We're all a little scared. It's okay to be scared. It is absolutely okay. You don't want to hang out anymore. It's too loud now. AC came in, freaked everybody out. You, you guys are probably a little upset that it's going on. Are right, we doing a fresh install right there? Do you see that right there? 18.6 gigs. That's the one. That's the one. We're not touching the other drives whatsoever. I just clicked OK. We're going to give it a second because this is a critical moment. There it is. Uh, we want a fresh install. Install a new boot environment, right? No. Format the boot device. Proceed with installation? Yes. Password? Can you guys see what I'm typing? You can. I'm going to have to switch out. Boom. You can't see from here, can you? Okay. Uh, even though it is not sensitive information, um, better safe than sorry, right? Very sorry for the AC noise. I just got that thing. I had no idea it's gonna be this loud. Uh, it's just it's much needed. It's crazy hot in this office. Um, you know. Hopefully, uh, give it a couple minutes, let it cool down in here. I'll turn it off. But for right now, it's just unbearably hot. I got two computers running, and uh, I got the lights over here next to me. There should be one here that's chip that's working, but it's not working right now. Uh, let me see if I can get Google to turn it on without talking to it. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. So actually, that may have improved the lighting a bit. Yeah, that's, a, that's slightly better. I'll take that. Yeah, let's see. Let me check in the preview here. Uh, it's okay. It's okay. If anything, it added a glare onto the monitor. But it's fine. Can I point that upward or something? Yeah, something like that. So how's everyone's day going? Leave it in the comments. <laughs> no one's here right now, so just leave it in the comments. I'll read them later. I appreciate everybody for stopping by and hanging out, watching me with this crazy, crazy uh, stream. This is actually part seven, uh, 202. Hopefully 202. That's what I'm calling this one. Because one of two got screwed up somehow. It actually worked out where uh, part six ended. Sorry, part seven. Well, it's actually can move along pretty quickly here. Look at that. That was quick. Uh, reboot. Let's reboot it. Take out the... Um, what am I trying to say? Take out the thumb drive. Uh, the thumb drive. Got the thumb drive. So now, SSD is still not plugged in. We should boot directly into the new FreeNAS installation we just did. Fingers crossed. Everything boots up fine. i got to change the CMOS battery. Where the hell is it? I don't even see it. Oh wait. It's not even in there. It's not in there. <laughs> uh, I don't know why it's not. I'll have to find one. It's also in a pretty uh, inconvenient place, but we'll make it work. Looks like it's trying to boot up. It's, it's talking to the router. Trying to get a DHCP going. No disk or disk error replacing what? Non system disk or disk error replacing strike any key when ready. How about you just do a reboot? You're on drugs. Can I control it? Uh, I hit F9. I think I was too late though. Trying to figure out what happens uh, when I put the old drive back in. It's going to have two FreeNAS boot installations, which is the original issue I ran into in part one. Alright, attempting to boot from drive. That's what it says. Oh, there we go. Let's boot FreeNAS. So the only thing that I'm mainly concerned about is uh, making sure I can set up the address again and access it. So let me go ahead and create a new window here. Okay, we're good. Once the link shows up, I think we'll be good to go. This is actually kind of where we last left off. Last time, all I did was um, install FreeNAS and, and then have it up and running. And this series of videos was supposed to be the setup. Um, so we kind of got most of the way there. Only issue is that I kind of have to do the setup again. So depending how the uploading of the configura configuration file goes, I don't know if I'm going to need to do that. Um, the drives should still have their information on there. My only concern is getting the cache working at this point. And if I had everything set up in, in this way that I wanted before, 
we wouldn't even be facing that issue. So it should be as simple as just you know adding the cache drive within the software. Shug, what are you doing? I see that what you're doing there. She's eating the kitty litter off the floor. It's nasty. Why do you need the kitty litter? It's bad for you. Oh, I can't wait to shove this thing in a closet and not have to deal with it until like a drive failure or something. Oh, I don't even want to think of a drive failure. I have no idea what to do in the event of a drive failure. I'm going to have to make sure I know. I have like documentation ready to go when that day comes. Because that day will come. Every drive has its day. I have a box full of drives that some of them don't even get recognized anymore. Who knows what's on those drives. Okay, looks like uh, it's coming back up. Okay, there it is. So we have a new, we have a new um, IP address, but it's fine. That's fine. That's the least of my worries right now. Okay. We're in. We're back in. Okay. Can I show you what's going on here? Uh, let's see. There we go. That looks fine, I guess. Maybe I should shrink it a bit. Something like that. That's working out pretty well right now. So what I want to do is go to System, General, Upload Config. I'm going to choose the file that I have created where is free NAS backup upload it okay we have free NAS doing something here or yeah it's doing something oh we're rebooting we are rebooting ladies and gentlemen I'm gonna go see if I could find a CMOS battery that's annoying me Every time, same message. So usually for CMOS, I think it's a 2032, but I only have a 2025. That should be fine, right? I think 32 is just bigger capacity. Um, yeah, and I'm wondering if I can just shove it in there or if I should turn off the system. I think I'll turn off the system before I shove it in there. You know what, I'm going to Google to see if there's like a standard CMOS, which there probably is. I think it's 2032. Ah, oh, 
seed is the 2032. Crap. 2025 should be fine, though. What is it doing? Boo. Boo. This is actually very promising. I'm super excited. I wonder if it backed up the plugin. I don't think it would back up the plugin. I might have to set that back up. We'll see. <laughs> it's my first time actually using the config file to come back. Yeah, that's the most annoying part of this. I'm sure with a newer machine, this would boot a process would be probably nearly instant. It's such a small operating system. Hence why I don't want to waste my 64 gig SSD. If that's the case, I'll take the 64 gig and use it on my main machine or something. But that's not even what I want to do, I want to cache. I need the cache. Link is down, link is up. Oh, we're back up. Sweet. I'm in, but my dashboard's not showing. I think it was a little premature because it's still booting up, it looks like. Oh, look at that. It's installing everything that I needed. So maybe it does back up the plugins. Look at that. I don't think it's going to do the backup of the plugin itself, is it? Like all the mounting stuff we did earlier? Are you using Django? No way, the, the database is built on Django. That's crazy. I'd have never guessed. Okay, looks like that was a uh, installation and migration. Next one is probably going to be the real boot in. See that six gigabyte SAS controller, or uh, six gigabytes per second SAS controller? That's uh, that was that controller I was talking about with all the SAS drives. That is not come stock on these things. That was uh, put in by the person I bought this from. Not gonna lie, I didn't know those existed. That's that's pretty cool that it does in fact exist. So if you're trying to do something like this and you want to have a small form factor machine, oh, excuse me, highly suggest to get one of those SAS drive controllers and just pop it in like a CD tray almost, or a CD drive rather. Alright, attempting to boot from hard drive. There it is. So now that we are back from the update, we should be able to boot in without any issues. Theoretically. I 
I also want to see if I can set up the video encoding to be done from the video card that's in here as opposed to the clients because none of the clients that we're going to be streaming from are going to be able to do any video decoding. I think they just read the video as it comes through the pipeline. Uh, okay, it's trying to mount stuff. This is usually where things would go bad. Uh, at least when I was booting from USB. So potentially fixable link is up. Hmm. Let's give it a quick second. main pool that's what we made last time so it actually might be backing up everything including the plug-in stuff okay link is up my computer should be recognizing it any second now Alright, and it retained our old IP address. We got our old IP address back. Oh, sweet. Okay. We are back in. Let's see if the config actually saved everything that we originally had. So, let's go to... Storage Pools. Okay, that looks legit. D does it have our user that we created? Yep, there's me, Sako. All right, so I think it saved everything. Let's look at the services. SMB is on. Um, sharing, Windows, main pool is being shared. So I sh let me check my network. Let's see if I can get access to that server, or this server rather. Come on. Looks like it's loading it. I don't know why it's so slow. Okay, this doesn't look too good. It's, um, it doesn't look like it's connecting. Yeah, I was not able to connect. Ah, I see Freenas on my network though. Uh, great, now my Explorer window is not responding. Let's see if Plex is here. Yep, Plex server. Same IP address. Let's see what it's like to access Plex. I am the user. Home screen is empty. That's fine. I wanted to go to... Where's the settings? Is this the settings? Go to libraries. There it is. My libraries are saved. 
Yep, media movies. So why can't I see it? Oh crap. I see Freena's on the network. Why isn't it asking me for credentials or anything? So it's under manage. Okay, it just takes me to Plex. Sharing, window shares. Configure permissions. At least one inheritable ACL entry is required. Okay. There it is. Uh, let's see if that works. So now if I double click on it, I should get prompted with like, provide uh, your credentials or something. Either that or I get right in if it remembers me. But we just we uploaded the config, so I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, it's not allowing me to get in. What happened here? Go to main pool, edit permissions, edit ACL. Is it going to freeze again? 100% it's going to freeze again. It has to be something with the permissions. Because Windows sees it. I just, it doesn't prompt me to... Um, I don't know, it doesn't prompt me to put my password in. shows root I'm trying to change it to my name and it looks like it works but when I go back to permissions it still says root Church, I don't know what name is. This is a little concerning. Edit, give me full permissions maybe. Oh, did I not set a password? I have to reset the password. No. Get out of here. to keep taking away my permissions that I set. I want all of these. Main pool, save. Great. It froze again. Jesus Christ. Learn saver. Supposedly, maybe, I don't know. I'm agnostic. Uh, I 
Prompt me. Come on. Still doesn't work. Edit permissions. Ugh, stop freezing. It's so stupid. Why is it? He just freaks out. Freaks out, and that's it. That's all she wrote. I don't know what else to do. Why is it a whole different set of problems? It just. Why did I back up the config if it's not going to have it? It has everything except the permissions. That's what it seems like. Should I try creating a new user? I'll try creating a new user. Okay, you know what? Don't even bother finishing the search. And task. I'm gonna go here. And root and actually let me delete Sako. Delete. Confirm. Delete. Add Sako Oh, come on. New primary group? I don't know. Why would I need a new primary group? Uh, whatever, it doesn't even matter. Give me the main pool, all permissions, for the love of God, done. Okay, so now if we go here, we have this, right? Okay, use as home share. I don't fully understand what that means, but we're supposed to share this freaking pool. Edit permissions. Sako is allowed access. Apply user. What does that mean? Confirm changes to user to prevent errors. Changing the user are submitted only when this box is set. Okay. Done. Do I get a prompt window? Nope. Why is there no prompt? Any ideas? Cannot access free NAS. What if I use one SCP? Do I have one SCP? I don't even have a start menu. <laughs> oh my god, my start menu is gone. What in the world? Where can my one SCP be? I don't even know if I have it. I 
can't even like force credentials on it. It should be under storage. I'm still getting an error. I can't do the root directory. You can't do it. It won't let you. You have to do this one. What's ACL? It doesn't even matter because I have permissions. Read, write data. All of the above. This one ACL, that ACL. Open ACL. Save. If I do home, does home work? I hit the refresh button and everything breaks. Oh, come on. I don't have a start menu or anything. I'm using shortcuts. Freenas pops up. Acts all accessible, then nothing works. I see it. It's right there. Sharing. The Windows share. Let's go here. Edit ACL. How about we do the whole thing to open? Like that. Diagnose the problem? I don't know. Detect the problem, Windows. User, me, has full control. Apply user. Save. Refresh. Freeze. Go up. Windows Explorer. And task. Open a new window. Via shortcut. Go to network. Free NAS. Oh, I thought something happened. I got so excited, nothing happened.
This is a throw hands up in the air kind of situation. Like, I don't know why it's doing this. The sharing is on. Edit ACL. Give me full control. Should I apply recursively? It freezes, go back. Oh god, it's just such a repetitive thing. End task, open new explorer. Network, I see free NAS. I double click it. The loading bar starts to go. And nothing is happening. <sighs> Usually we would get a prompt or something. All right. Well, I think I'm gonna end the stream here. Um, I know it's unsuccessful, but what can I do at this point in time? Yeah. See, the mounting point is good. Everything is good. Uh, services. SMB is on. Sharing. I have the main pool. No, see, we don't want to do that. Advanced mode. There's really nothing else for me to do here. So then we would have to go to storage, pools. edit the ECL um, Okay, so this is what he, this guy is saying. Uh, yeah, he removed all users and groups he created so that only the defaults were left. Deleted CIFS share that he had set up. Rebooted both his PC and his FreeNAS box. Added a new CIFS share with the name FreeNAS in lowercase. Checkbox allow guests map the path to my main volume. Accepted prompts to switch the CIFS service. Went to Windows, open FreeNAS network, and ta-da! I'm able to rewrite and execute in the network location. So that guy just basically went back to step one of this entire process. And if I reboot my machine, the stream is done. So I'm going to go ahead, reboot my machine, and if it works, I'm going to continue on adding the cache drive. But if it doesn't, I'm not going to return to the stream. Until next time, thank you for watching and troubleshooting with me. I can't believe this happened. I think it's because the config didn't import the share correctly. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the user I made. And uh, yeah, I'm going to reboot the machine. I'll BRB whenever I see you guys again. Have a good one. Thank you for joining me. Till next.